Hey, remember when Nelson Mandela died in 2013, 23 entire years after he was released from prison? Or maybe you, like paranormal researcher Fiona Broom, distinctly remember Nelson Mandela dying while still in prison, and maybe instead of simply assuming that you're an idiot who didn't pay attention to extremely important world events that directly impact millions of marginalized people on another continent, instead you think that this must actually be evidence that you are from an alternate universe where that did happen, and now, for some reason, you have been thrust into this new dimension where everything is pretty much the same except for that one thing. Oh, and I guess maybe in your original dimension, apartheid never ended? Who knows? A lot of other Americans with a similarly bad understanding of history agree with Broom, and thus was born the Mandela Effect, a catch-all term now for any mistaken memory that a person truly believes in their heart is a correct memory. And look, yes, I am a critical thinker who has ascended beyond such conspiracy theories, but I will admit that an early example of the Mandela effect did throw me for a loop, the classic example of the Berenstain Bears. I had tons of those stupid books, I read them all of the time, and I definitely always read them as Berenstain. But when I heard that, oh, it was actually Berenstain, I looked up the books, I read the Wikipedia page for the authors who named the bears after their own last name, Baron Stain, and I accepted the fact that I was wrong. I'm terrible with details. It's not exactly shocking that this happened, and I don't need to invent an entire additional universe to explain what happened here. Research on the Mandela Effect has almost entirely been about the various conspiracy theories surrounding it. You know, why do people want to believe that they come from an alternate dimension or that a shadowy government is trying to retcon history by covering up the death of a civil rights hero in prison or things like that. But a recent study, currently in preprint, so not peer-reviewed yet, but due to be published soon in the journal Psychological Science, looks at what, what might be the actual reason for so many people misremembering certain things in the exact same way. The paper involved several different experiments, uh, some of which I found personally more useful than others. In the first experiment, they recruited 100 English-speaking Americans on Mechanical Turk and had them look at 40 image sets, each of which contained one well-known character or logo, uh, and then one edited version of that showing a common misremembering, and then one extra edit of the same sort of detail, but one that isn't commonly cited as being misremembered. And the subjects then had to pick which one was the original and rate, you know, how familiar they were with the character or logo and how confident they were in their choice. For instance, is the Playboy Bunny naked? Does he have a saucy little bow tie? Or is he on the way to a meeting with the CEO? Is he even a boy? I don't know. That study suggested that seven of the images they chose showed the hallmarks of the Mandela effect and that people consistently chose the incorrect image and the same incorrect image. Like the subjects remembered C-3PO having two golden legs instead of one silver, Curious George as having a tail, the Fruit of the Loom logo having a cornucopia, the Monopoly man having a monocle, Pikachu having a black tip on his tail, and the Volkswagen logo having no gaps between the letters, and oh, and Waldo from Where's Waldo having no cane. In the second study, they wanted to see if people just weren't looking closely at the relevant part of each of those images. Uh, but tracking software confirmed that the subjects really were looking directly at the features that were wrong before they went and chose the incorrect image. In the third study, they scraped Google images to see how commonly people were exposed to the features that they were screwing up. Maybe they just weren't very familiar with those features. And they found that while some examples like C-3PO's legs were pretty rarely shown, 
Others were constantly front and center, like the Monopoly man's face. So people weren't just misremembering because they didn't often see the correct version of the image. In the last study, they first asked the subjects how familiar they were with a particular subject identified by name, like Pikachu. People who said that they were very familiar were asked to just draw that subject from memory. And those who said that they weren't very familiar were shown the correct version of the image and then asked to draw the image immediately after they saw it. And... You know, I got to say, I really enjoyed this part because some of those subjects were goddamn artists. But the researchers found that some of the same Mandela effects popped up in both groups. Everybody drew C-3PO with golden legs. The Monopoly man got a lot of unnecessary monocles and Curious George got a few unnecessary tails. Let me be clear. Uh, I found none of this surprising. <laughs> Except for, except for the artistic skill of some of these subjects. Like, seriously, look at this perfect Pikachu. And this Monopoly man who just screams go directly to jail is very impressive. But the author's conclusions that the Mandela effect cannot be universally explained by a single account and perhaps different images cause the Mandela effect for different reasons, some related to schemas, some related to visual experience, and some related to something entirely different about the images themselves. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> like, I know I say this all the time. It's important to do science even to test things that we think are are obvious, but yeah, this seemed really obvious to me. The only thing that ties all of these things together is that each one is considered a false memory, but there are many ways for a person and even a population to get a false memory. Allow me, a complete non-scientist dum-dum, to go through and give you what I think is a pretty reasonable guess for what's happened in each of these cases. Waldo having a cane – that shouldn't even count as a Mandela effect because how many people are out there insisting Waldo never had a cane? And how many people just think, well, the cane isn't central to Waldo's personality, so I'm not going to draw it. As a Waldo super fan, I obviously know he has a cane because that was one of the items you had to help him find. And it was important. It was an important part of the Waldo lore in that a magical wizard gave the cane to him to help him open portals so he could explore new places. But okay, yes, the casual Waldo enjoyer probably wouldn't see the cane as being a particularly memorable item. C-3PO having one silver leg is something I didn't even notice until I saw a toy that featured it. But here's the thing. The toys I played with in the 1980s didn't have that. And I spent a lot of time looking at that character on screen, but way more time playing with those toys, which had two golden legs, like the officially licensed C-3PO two golden legs. Also, 3PO didn't have the silver leg in the prequels, nor did he have them in the most recent three movies. And in the originals, his legs are rarely shown. And when they are, the silver leg is pretty subtle. Like, most people are not going to notice. So just shut up, nerds. Curious George not having a tail. Okay, he is constantly referred to as a good little monkey, always very curious. He is constantly, consistently called a monkey. And you know what? Monkeys have tails. Oh, but what about the Barbary macaque? Shut up, nerd. Seriously, people associate monkeys with tails. And frankly, it's weird that Curious George doesn't have a tail. It's natural for people to just assume that he does have one. The VW logo having a gap between the letters, you know what? It looks better without the gap. There. End of story. People remember it without a gap because they default to a simpler and more streamlined design. I'm actually impressed that anyone was able to draw that logo from memory and get it right. Like... I will probably would have said, yeah, sure, I'm familiar with Volkswagen. And then when asked to draw the logo, I probably would not have even come close because who cares? The Monopoly man not wearing a monocle. In our culture, we use a monocle as a shorthand for out-of-touch fancy rich guy. 
All those things we also associate with the Monopoly guy. That's it. That's the explanation. Our stupid, tailless monkey brains take shortcuts. And so when we ask our stupid monkey brain to show us the famous fancy rich guy, it throws in a monocle because they're all in the same bin together. That's it. Pikachu not having a black tipped tail is pretty understandable when the most common images show his black tipped ears very close to his tail. It's another brain shortcut. Pointy Pikachu things have black tips. And honestly, it looks better. Frankly, he should have been designed with a black tip tail in the first place. Finally, Fruit of the Loom. This this is one I find really interesting. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, before I learned about all of this, think that the logo used to have a cornucopia behind the fruit. The company insists that this has never been in the logo, and really they have no reason to lie unless the entire company has decided to perpetuate a massive fraud just for the purpose of exploiting this phenomenon that a handful of conspiracy theorists know about. But if you look at the history of the logo, you'll see that they have made it more and more simple over time, which is frankly a good decision from a marketing standpoint. Consumers don't like overly complicated logos, and they often fail to correctly remember them. So this has been a very common evolution for a lot of older companies over the years as advertising companies have improved their tactics. This is the logo that was around when I was a kid and when many of the people who claim to recall a cornucopia were kids. It resembles the previous one from 1962 quite a bit. And in both of those logos, what the fuck is that brownish yellow stuff? Leaves? Leaves that are the same brownish yellow color as those berries in the front? And when you see this image poorly printed using 1960s technology on your stretchy underpants... Doesn't that brownish yellow look like it wraps around the fruit? Fruit that is displayed in exactly the way that we always saw cornucopias displayed every fall. And if you just glance at that, it's not too crazy to assume, oh yeah, cornucopia. After all, who spends hours examining the logo on their tidy whiteies? What is especially interesting about this one is that the misremembering seems to extend all the way back to the 1970s when that logo was in use. Here's an LP from Frank West playing on the incorrect logo from 1973. And here's a news clipping from 1994 in which a reporter interviews the grapes from the Fruit of the Loom commercial and mentions that the logo has a cornucopia despite the actual commercial showing the logo without a cornucopia. So... All of that. Plus, maybe there were knockoff brands that did feature a cornucopia. You know, who knows? There are a lot of things that could play into why we see a cornucopia where there was never one there. My point is this. If you want to study why people seem to have shared delusions that they independently come up with, you have to study each of those delusions as unique instances even if they all appear on the r slash Mandela effect subreddit. Because the Mandela effect is just a catchy name made up by someone who thinks ghosts are real, but Nelson Mandela's presidency was not. And maybe we shouldn't assume that there's necessarily some through line between that and a guy who was positive Britney Spears wore a plaid skirt in the Hit Me Baby One More Time music video. By the way, that one is just because we associate slutty schoolgirls with plaid skirts. There, I solved it.